Hey, what's up guys? Darkroom Duels, and today we're going to be doing a Time Lord deck profile. So I'm really excited for you guys because this deck is an extremely powerful deck that revolves around normal summoning out some powerful monsters to your side of the field that have some of the most crazy effects in the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Which I've changed up this deck a lot since my previous build to make it more of a stun-based deck to normal summon out a Time Lord to your field and back it up with all sorts of different back rows. So, without further ado guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell on there so you can come part of Notification Squad and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below for all those awesome rewards, like in your name, description, your single video, getting assigned cards in the mail, and even getting to request a deck profile every single month your patron, along with Test Hand. So, without further ado, let's get straight on into this. So, first off, we're playing three copies of Sandy on the Time Lord, which has 4,000 attack points, which is just absolutely nuts. This card has a really neat effect that it cannot be special summoned from the deck, and you can only control one copy of this card. And if only your opponent controls a monster, then you can normal summon this card without tributing, and it cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects, and neither player takes any battle damage from battles involving this card. And at the end of the battle phase, if this card battles, inflict 2,000 points of damage to your opponent, and then once per turn during your standby phase, shuffle this card into the deck. Now that's a really powerful effect to do 2,000 attack points or 2,000 burn damage to your opponent. It's just a great effect to be able to use in this deck. We then play three copies of My Keon the Time Lord. My Keon is personally my favorite of all of the Time Lords because it has the ability that it cannot be special summoned from the deck, which all of your Time Lords share that ability. And if you control no monsters, you can normal summon this card without tributing and it cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects and you take no battles from battles involving this card. And at the end of the battle phase, it gets an effect, which all of your Time Lords share that ability that they have the effect that they cannot be special summoned from the deck. And if you don't control a monster, you can normal summon this card to your side of the field without tributing, which is a great effect. Now, this card's unique effect is at the end of the battle phase, if this card battled half your opponent's life points. And then all of your Time Lords also share the ability that once per turn, during this standby phase, shuffle this card into the deck, which is a powerful effect because it gets itself out of the way to summon out the exact Time Lord that you need to your side of the field. We then play a single copy of Zafion the Time Lord. I bumped Zafion down to one because of one of the tech cards that we're playing in this deck. And this card has the ability, if this card battles, shuffle all spell and trap cards your opponent controls into the deck. And if this card is sent to the field to the graveyard, you get to draw a card, which is this card's unique effect. I play a single copy of Raphion. Raphion is a card that I wanted to play as a two of in here, but I've kind of just bumped it down to one because of, again, one of the tech cards we're playing in this deck. But it has the ability, to, if this card battled, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of one monster your opponent controls that battled this card. We then play a single copy of Lazion as well. Lazion has the ability, if this card battled, you shuffle all cards in your opponent's graveyard into the deck, and then once per turn, if your opponent draws a card, inflict a thousand points of damage to your opponent, which is a pretty powerful effect to just do a thousand points of burn damage. We then play a single copy of Medion. Medion is a neat one of in here. I just feel like you need one each of these four Time Lords, because Medion has the ability, if this card battled, to return as many monsters on the field as possible to the hand, and other than this card, and if do inflict 300 points of damage to your opponent for each card returned by this effect. Now, actually, the interesting thing is, is Medion was the first of all of the Time Lords to be printed, which is a very interesting thing for this deck. So for the other cards we're playing in here, we're going to be playing three copies of Time Maiden as well. Time Maiden is a great card that helps you out summoning your Time Lords to your side of the field, because this card has the ability, if you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand, and this card can be treated as two tributes for the tribute summon of a Time Lord monster monster, and you can tribute this card to add a Time Lord monster with zero attack from your deck to your hand. You can manage this card from the graveyard to special summon a Time Lord monster with zero attack from your deck, ignoring its summoning conditions, and you can't special summon other monsters during the turn you activate this effect. I love that effect just to be able to give me an additional Time Lord on the field, and this card literally does it all for this deck. We then play three copies of my personal tech card in this deck, and that is three copies of Lord of the Heavenly Prison. This card is a great three of in this deck because we are playing a stun back row control variant of this build. So this card is a level 10 monster that has the ability that during the main phase, you can activate this effect that this card becomes revealed until the end of your opponent's turn. And when 
this card is revealed by this effect and a set card is activated on the field, then you can special summon this card from your hand, which is an extremely powerful effect. And then after you special summon this card, you can add or set to your side of the field one spell or trap directly from your deck, but banish it during the end phase of the next turn. And while this card is revealed in your hand, your set cards cannot be destroyed by other card effects, which is a very powerful effect to be able to protect your back row. Special summon this card is a level 10 monster to your side of the field and also be able to grab any of the cards that you need from the deck that are back row. So that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's get into the spells. So for the spells, we're going to be playing a single copy of One for One. One for One is here because basically you can special summon out Time Maiden with this card and get rid of any card that you need in your hand. We play three copies of the new map card. This card is a relatively new release card and it's super powerful in this deck because it has the ability that at the start of your main phase one, you get to add one monster with zero attack from your deck to your hand, but half your life points after adding it to your hand until the end phase of the next turn after this card was activated. You cannot activate the added monster effects or effects of the cards with that name until you normal summon or uh, set or normal summon that monster with the same name, which is a very powerful effect to be able to grab literally any of your Time Lord monsters because all of them have zero attack except for your copies of Sandion. We then play three copies of Celestial Transformation as well. Celestial Transformation is a great card in this deck because it has the ability to special summon a fairy monster from your hand but destroy it during the end phase, which all of your Time Lord monsters cannot be destroyed by card effects this card basically just says special summon a time lord from your hand and then half the attack which half of zero is still zero except for your copy of sandion which will go down to 2000 we then play three copies of pod of extravagance which lets us draw two now what you might be thinking about this is the copies of pod of extravagance and the map do kind of go against each other because they have to be the first card that you activate but the really nice thing about these two cards is you're never usually going to have both of them in the same hand. And if you do, you usually are going to use the copy of the Pot of Extravagance to draw the two cards to get the back row first, unless you absolutely need to get to a copy of a Time Lord, because this card is basically just three of any Time Lords that can be used later in the duel for backup plays if you need it. It's not a you have to play the copies of the map as soon as you draw it because you play enough Time Lords that you can get to them without this card. So that's it for the spells, guys. Let's get into the traps. So for the traps, we're going to be playing three copies of Torrential Tribute. Torrential Tribute is a great card in this deck because Torrential Tribute lets you board wipe the field and your Time Lords can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects. So this card basically just says board wipe your opponent. We play three copies of Ice Dragon's Prison. This card is a great card because it has the ability. It's going to let you special summon a monster back from your opponent's graveyard. And then once you do, you get to activate the effect to banish a monster from both players' fields that have the same type as each other. So this card comes in very very handy if your opponent has an extremely powerful monster against you. You can use this card to special them back a monster with the same type from their graveyard and then banish a card from both players' fields with this card's effect. You're usually going to want to get that monster out of the way as quickly as possible with this card because you're going to want to be able to normal summon out your Time Lords. We then play three copies of Solemn Judgment. This is here to basically protect our Time Lord monsters from different effects that we might not want to be able to have to stop them from because, for example, your opponent might try and use a card that just banishes our time lords instead of getting rid of them by other card effects and this card can actually help you out with that because you can pay half your life points when your opponent either activates a spell or trap card or summons a monster to their field including special summoning and negate that effect which is a great effect to be able to protect yourself against we then play three copies of empty machine empty machine is a great card because this card has the ability that the first time this face of card would be destroyed by an opponent's card effect it is not destroyed and then once per turn you can activate one of these effects to discard a level 10 card to draw a card or if this card is the only card in your spell and trap card zone you can target a time lord monster in your graveyard and shuffle it into the deck and then you can set an infinite machine directly from your hand or deck we then play a single copy of infinite machine you only need a single copy of infinite machine because it's searchable off your copy of empty machine and infinite machine has the ability that you activate this card by sending one face up empty machine from your spell and trap card zone to the graveyard and then once per turn this face of a card cannot be destroyed by opponent's card effects and once per turn you can activate one of the following effects that during your main phase you can special summon out a time lord monster from your hand 
or you can have the effect to target a Time Lord monster in the graveyard and shuffle it into the deck, and then set a copy of Infinite Light directly from your hand or deck, which we then play a single copy of Infinite Light, which is the final evolution of this trap lineup, which has the ability that you can activate this card by sending one face up Infinite Machine from your spell and trap card zone to the graveyard, and this face up card cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Neither player can, um, Target Time Lord monsters you control with card effects or return Time Lord monsters from the field of the deck. And then once per turn, if you control no monsters, you can special summon one Time Lord monster each from your hand deck and graveyard with different names, ignoring their summoning conditions. So you get to summon out three Time Lords with this card's effect, which is an insanely powerful effect, especially when you consider you can summon out a copy of Sandion, Raphion, and Mikeon to get all their effects to go off and basically end the game. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Guys, let's get into the extra deck. So for the extra deck, since we are playing Pot of Extravagance, all of these cards are tech cards. You can include any of the ones that you want or take some of the cards out. I do highly recommend the train engine in the extra deck because it does come in very handy. So for the extra deck, we're going to be playing two copies of Super uh, Rail Cannon Juggernaut Levy. This card is a really good card to help you OTK, especially with our copies of Lord of the Heavenly Prism. This card comes in very handy to be able to overlay on top of your copies of number 81 which can detach a material to basically make it where it is unaffected by all their card effects, or one of our three copies of Super Dreadnought Real Cannon, Gustav Max. Now, I highly recommend in this deck to play three copies of Gustav Max, because Gustav Max gets us to our Real Cannon Juggernaut Libby, and also lets us burn our opponent for 2,000, which all of our Time Lord monsters that are really, really good do burn damage, so this is a really good card effect to be able to use to be able to end a game if you have a Lord of the Heavenly Sky Prison or Lord of the Heavenly Prison on the field, and a copy of a Time Lord monster, you can make this card extremely easily. We then play two copies of number 35, Ravenous Tarantula. This card is an insanely powerful card in this deck. I love this card as a two up, and I have considered actually bumping it up to three with the copies of Solemn Judgment and the copies of the map, because this card has the ability that all monsters you control gain attack and defense equal to the difference between your life points and your opponent's life points. So if we pay half twice, we'll be at 2,000 points. So this card will come out and make every Every monster in our field to go up to 6,000 attack points, which is absolutely crazy. It also has the ability when this card is Xyz materials, each time your opponent spells summons a monster, you inflict 600 points of damage to your opponent, and then once per turn, you can detach a material, destroy all face of monster opponent controls with attack less than or equal to this card. This card's pretty good because it's basically a flare metal and also gives all of your monsters extra attack points. We then play a single copy of Double A Zeus just as a tech card to board wipe. I don't usually need to board wipe in this game outside of the Torrential Tribune, so this card is just here as a tech card. We then play a single copy of Unicorn to spin stuff. Phoenix to pop spells and traps, Cerberus to pop monsters, IP Masquerade to go into the Unicorn, one copy of Link Rebo because we can use it with the Time Maiden, and a single copy of Relinquished Anima to be able to gobble up upon his monsters. Now you can play any of these cards at multiple numbers. If you want to bump your copies of, say, your Ravenous Tarantula 3, you can actually drop Cerberus. If you feel like you need more copies of Juggernaut Libby, you can drop your copy of Phoenix down. If you want to play three copies of Link Rebo, you can drop down your copies of Nightmare Cerberus and Unicorn down to zero and play three copies of Link Rebo. Since it is a pot of extravagance deck, you don't really need the extra deck all that much. The only cards that I find myself going into all that much in this deck is my copies of my train package, which I absolutely love in this deck. So anyways, guys, this is Dark Arm Duelist. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Definitely tell me what you think of this deck down in the comments down below. It's a really fun deck to play with, and I highly recommend that you guys have never played with Time Lords. I highly recommend it. It doesn't lot of burn damage but it's a super fun deck to be able to control the board and really make your opponent think so anyways guys this is dark arm duels and we'll see you guys in the next video see you later guys